And now, today's word. Third thing that wisdom calls us to is that wisdom will call us to truth. The voice of wisdom is the voice of truth. Wisdom calls us to what is firm and trustworthy. Wisdom stands on solid ground. She is firmly rooted and enduring. Wisdom is not shallow. Wisdom is not deceptive. Wisdom is not crooked. Wisdom is not a crook. Don't call a crook a wise person. Wisdom, biblical wisdom, speaks the truth. Wisdom shows us an enduring path. And wisdom tells us to build on firm foundations. Wisdom will tell us to move from shortcuts and short fixes to do things that are enduring. Wisdom will not tell you if you want to lose weight that eat all you can, don't exercise, but take this tablet and you will lose all the fat. Because wisdom will tell you the truth. That if you want to lose weight, you're going to work hard. It took you hard work to put on weight. It's going to take you hard work to put off the weight. Wisdom is not going to give you a shortcut to making money. You're not going to stick some numbers into the national lotteries and hope to prosper. You're not going to go to the casino and pull the jackpot and hope that your destiny will turn. You're not going to receive one letter that will solve all your financial problems. Wisdom does not speak shortcuts. It tells the truth. The firm, the sure, the established, the enduring foundation. If you're looking for shortcuts, you're not looking for wisdom. Because the voice of wisdom is the voice of truth. It is firm and it is established. The fourth thing that wisdom speaks is righteousness. Wisdom calls to what pleases God. Wisdom tells us to be mindful of God's will, that we endeavor to please the Lord in all that we do. Nothing crooked and perverse comes out of biblical wisdom. Now, I know somebody will say, well, but there are some people who are really wise and they are crooks. There are, there, there are different kinds of wisdom. There is being wise in your own eyes when you think you are smart and you are not. Then there is a wisdom of this world. And then there is a wisdom of God. When we talk about wisdom here, we are not talking about being wise in your own eyes. We are not talking about the wisdom of this world. We are talking about the wisdom of God. If you want the wisdom of this world, go ahead and follow it. But it will take you to its natural place, to doom and destruction. If you want to be wise in your own eyes, go ahead and be wise in your own eyes. But you make a fool of yourself to everybody. The wisdom we're talking about here is the wisdom of the Bible. Biblical wisdom. And biblical wisdom calls to righteousness. Pleasing God. Nothing crooked. Nothing perverse. It's not fraudulent. It is not playing tricks. It is not cunning devices of trickery. The next thing we're going to look at is wisdom's companions wisdom's companions who are the people who hang around wisdom as we say birds of the same feather flock together show me your friend i'll show you your character so wisdom has friends and there are six friends of wisdom we'll be looking at uh, from Proverbs chapter 8. Wisdom's companions. Verses 12 and 14, we look at wisdom's 
companions, wisdom's friends. Wherever wisdom is, these friends are close by. It says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So these are the companions of wisdom. These are the things that come with wisdom. When you ask for wisdom, these six are coming with it. First is prudence. And I spoke a, a lot about prudence um, when I started the series. Prudence basically is sensible behavior. Sensible behavior. Prudence is a friend of wisdom. To be prudent is to be able to manage what you have well. It is the ability to manage the little you have so that it can achieve more. Prudence is careful. It is not rush. It is not hasty. Prudence is how to manage little. It is a disaster of life when you have little and you are wasteful. At least if somebody has a lot and he's wasteful, there will be something left. But somebody who is broke and has very little, especially somebody earning a very low salary, and on every payday decides to live big. You're broke, you're married, you have three children, and you have a girlfriend. Now, I don't even know what to say to you. Wisdom is prudence. Prudence says, I have one trouser, but it's going to be neat all the time. Prudence says, I have one shoe, but it's going to be the nicest shoe in town. Because I'm going to make sure it is well dried and well polished anytime I wear it. Prudence says, I don't have much, but I'm going to manage it excellently. So that when I'm faithful in little, I'll be faithful in much. Prudence is sensible behavior. Sensible. Being sensible. The second friend of wisdom is knowledge. Knowledge is to take note and learn from things. Knowledge is a friend of wisdom. Knowledge is not about the accumulation of facts and figures in order to pass an exam. Knowledge is about being observant. Wisdom is not accumulation of facts and figures. Knowledge is not what you learn in school. Knowledge is when you are able to observe the ant and observe the world gecko and observe the bird and learn of its ways and apply the lessons to your life. That is knowledge. That is why knowledge can be acquired by somebody who doesn't have formal education. And somebody who has formal education will not have it. I have seen people who have never sat in a classroom, start a business, be successful, and employ people who went to school and went to graduate school to learn masters in business administration. Employed by somebody who never sat in a classroom. So who has knowledge? Knowledge is not accumulation of facts and figures. It's how observant you are. How much you pay attention to what is happening around you. Do you see changes? Do you see it when things change around you? Do you observe what is happening around you? Do you learn any lessons from what is happening around you? That is knowledge. And that is a friend of wisdom. If you're going to be wise, you have to be observant. You have to pay attention. And you have to take note. And you have to learn. Third friend of wisdom is discretion. Discretion is to make good choices. Having discretion... 
is having the freedom to decide what is right at every given time. When we have discretion, it means we have power to do what we want. But it does not mean using that power without proper consideration of what you're doing. It's like having petty cash. If, if, if you're going to, uh, if, you, if you're traveling and, and your office gives you petty cash, you don't just go travel to the next village, sit around the pito or, or palm wine, stop and blow all the petty cash because I have discretion. You have discretion, but it is assumed that you have wisdom too. And so that petty cash is given to you at your discretion, but you use your discretion with wisdom. If your weaknesses, what you don't have capacity for. For example, a bird is made for flying. That is, that is its strength. The strength of a bird is flying. What if the bird would spend all its life learning to swim because it likes the way fish swim it is unwise my friends to spend your life mastering in your weakness wisdom is that you find your strength and work with your strength wisdom teaches us to work with strength Wisdom makes us stronger and not weaker. Wisdom does not make us disadvantaged. Wisdom helps us to play on our greatest advantage. Now, if you note in the passage, wisdom talks about its enemies. And I'll, I'll just mention them briefly. Wisdom's enemies are pride and arrogance. And the perverse mouth. Pride and arrogance. If you're proud, it means you've lifted up yourself so high. And if you're lifted up so high, nothing gets into you. I always say that if you put a cup, an empty cup, on top of a top and open the top, no water will enter the cup. Although it's very close to the top and close to the water. But its position on top of the top will not allow it to receive water. If the cup wants to receive water, it has to go under the tap. Pride puts you on top. Humility puts you under so you can receive what is being poured out. Arrogance is an enemy of wisdom. And the perverse mouth. Perverse mouth. I think I will talk about that on another session. The perverse mouth. Talking by heart. Talking by, by heart. You can't be wise and talk by heart. And Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otobi, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otobi. Email otobi at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.